It's been a while since I reviewed Midnight BSD. Let's have a look at version 2.03. Right, we're going to test this on my usual test machine. Uh, Built into Midnight's BSD, let's see what we can find. Right, there's a splash screen. I'll just fast forward this. Right, the install looks pretty familiar if you've installed FreeBSD uh, lately. So we'll just, uh, you get your shell, your live CD, and you install. Click the install. And you select your key map. United Kingdom in this case. If I can find it, there you go. And continue and host name, I'll just put test. The lib32 and m parts is selected, I think. Uh, I think that's all with my select source. Uh, we'll go for auto ZFS. Just change it to uh, Stripe, uh, select the install, there you go. We'll leave everything else uh, as default. And proceed with installation, and yes. So it's pretty straightforward so far, I like that. Midnight BSD is marketed, well, it's promoted as BSD for everyone, um, we'll see. New password, and that. Go through this and do a little. Like I say, if you've seen me install FreeBSD before, then all of this will be pretty familiar. Country region and uh, time and date. Now this is unusual. A lot of these are pre-selected. Um, I wouldn't have them all automatically do selected by default, but um, like uh, I don't need that one doing. Um, multicast DNS, I don't need doing. Power D, no, I don't need that. Uh, let's say multicast DNS, I don't need doing. I haven't got uh, Apple devices or anything I want to uh, send to. I'm going to enable some of these and add users. Right. It's all done. Uh, we just need to reboot the machine and we shall see uh, what happens next. Previous review of this didn't go too well for me, so we'll see. Right. Upon first boot, you're asked if you would like to um, install BSD stats and send some information. In this case, I'm going to go yes. I have no problem with that. And would you like to activate monthly reporting? Uh, yes. I'm going to click no for these. Run it now. Uh, yeah, I've got them. And would you like to have a reboot? Yeah. Next, you're asked if you want to enable a graphical environment. I'm going to click yes. I'm going to select yes. Let it do its thing. I've speeded this up even so it takes a while. After it's installed, it suggests a restart to uh, enable the graphic login. So we're going to restart the machine. So it's going all well so far. We'll see if we can uh, get this part up and going. And, oh, very nice. You've got a nice splash screen, login screen. Let's put in the username and password. Ah, fail to execute login command. And doing a quick search on the internet reveals that this bug um, has been in since version 2.0.1 and it hasn't been fixed yet. So uh, we're going to have to do things the old fashioned way. I'm going to have to go into the system and create or edit the .xinitrc. And we'll just have to manually put in a, um, a graphical interface. In this case, it's Motive Window Manager because it's small and it's easy to install. And I've already previously uh, install that off camera and here we are so it's working and I'm just going to reboot to make sure that we can actually go into it and uh, do it this way 
yeah, it's working nicely. I can't understand how it was released uh, since version 2.0.1. It hasn't been fixed yet, but it's just one of those things. Now we need some software to go in if we're going to have a desktop. And I would suggest we have a look at Firefox. I don't know what version it's going to be. Ah, right, version 80. So it's about six revisions or maybe five revisions uh, behind. So we start Firefox. Ah, okay. Uh, let me see. have a quick look and see what the solution is. And the solution is to install a file called DAV1E. Oh, sorry, DAV1D. And why that wasn't pulled in when you installed Firefox, I have no idea. So now we've got Firefox going. I'm. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I've. This is a condensed video. This and a lot of work went into getting this installed so far. So it's a little bit tiring. Uh, no thanks on that. I'm gonna search for Robonuggy on YouTube. I must say everything does feel fairly speedy. Whether that's to do with Motive Window Manager or. The, uh, the OS, I'm not sure. If it works, it's all very nice. Go to Google. And set that as my default uh, window manager. Ah, okay. It seems to have crashed. Let's have a look. I have no idea what causes that. Okay, we'll try again. And uh, this time we're going to look at the cog rather than the... Ah, uh, oh, okay. Doesn't seem to want to work. Oh, using the uh, the burger menu or the uh, cog, it doesn't want to work. Okay, let's have a look for uh, LibreOffice. There's no LibreOffice, especially in the ports anyway. Uh, we'll search for Firefox. Yeah, you search for Firefox, that's all right. We've got user end parts and see what's in there. Okay, we've got quite a wide selection, but we'll uh, go have some uh, specifics. And uh, yeah, there's no LibreOffice. There's Linux OpenOffice 3, Abbey Word, and uh, that's about it. I get it, maybe. Okay. Let's have a look for uh, some window managers, see what available we can have as desktops. Um, well, there's no KDE or GNOME or MATE. Do you know, there's not a right lot of choice. There's XFCE, which I think we should have had automatically when we chose to have a graphical environment. Um, TWM. Of course, uh, Open Motif is there. Well, it's not there, but, you know, we installed it. ISWM. I, I hate to think what actually uh, version that is. Ah, okay. So, so far, we haven't got a lot of choice for office uh, programs. Desktops or in graphic environments are pretty limited. Let's try updating the system. On FreeBSD, there's the FreeBSD Update Fetch install, which is uh, pretty comprehensive and do everything for you to upgrade the base. Um, with Midnight BST, you never used to have, I don't know if that's the case, no, you never used to have that facility. You have to upgrade everything by uh, updating the, uh, the source by SVN. And I think that's still the case. There's some documentation on, up, on uh, updating, and it looks pretty old, based on Midnight BSD 0.6. But I don't think it's changed, so we'll have a look. Okay, do Scroll down to uh, what we can see. Okay, yeah. There's references to FreeBSD 6. FreeBSD 7. Uh, 
I, yeah. Some of this is old. I know that uh, Midnight BSD was not derived from it, was actually forked from FreeBSD quite a long time ago, but I, uh, even then, it's dated 2013, 2015. Okay, well, we'll have a look at this. This is uh, how to update by SVN for users and source and users and imports. We'll have a look at the source. If I can highlight it. There we go. Nope. Okay. We'll try uh, users and imports. Okay, we're going to try uh, some uh, kernel updating, if I can get it right. Good grief. All right, try it now again. There you go. I don't tend to do it this way, so I have no idea if I did it right or wrong. But everything seems to work, so uh, I presume we did it right. And I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm just going to time how long the boot takes. I think it was uh, 39 seconds with uh, Ghost BSD. Let's see how long this one takes. Coming up to Ghost BSD time. All right, about 41. That's not too bad, it's about the same. Let's log in. I think it should be working. After many hours of updating the ports and updating the uh, source via SVN. Uh, we'll try installing Chromium. Uh, Chromium is not found, okay? But the thing is, if we look in this particular directory, Chromium, I'm going to scroll up a bit more actually, Chromium is there. So you can install via imports even though it's listed. Uh, no. Where is Chromium? And there it is. But you can't you can't install it. So yeah, I'm reaching the end of my uh, patience. Not mean to be cruel, but. Uh, you know, this is not a BST for everyone. It really isn't. It wasn't when I looked at it last time, and it's not this time. So anyway, that's enough of that. I spent a good few hours on this. It's condensed into a small video, but really, a long time looking at it. Right. This is interesting. I don't wish to disparage anyone's work. I understand that... Uh, the developer Lucas, he puts a lot of time and effort and heart into his project, undoubtedly. The OS itself feels fast, it was snappy, it was quick, uh, it used limited resources. It was what you would expect from BST, but it lacks so many things. It, a lot of the basics which FreeBSD has, it didn't have. A lot of the available uh, packages weren't there. Yeah, even Linus, which is pretty much a, uh, a universal um, security audit, wasn't available. It didn't have LibreOffice. It uh, had an old version of Firefox. The The operating system is marked as uh, BST for everyone. Now, I don't think it is. If you got someone who was new to BST and they try to install this, this is about as unfriendly as it gets. I think that they will be put off straight away. I think that uh, one experience of this and they'd never want to come back again to any BSDs. I think FreeBSD um, 
is now at a point where it's just really easy to install and everything's there. There are a lot of uh, derivatives like GhostBSD and Hello uh, system and Nomad BSD, which fill the uh, out of the box experience. So where does that leave Midnight BSD? Well, I, I want to like Midnight BSD. I think the more BSDs we have that fulfill a, a specific niche, uh, unlike Linux where there's copies upon copies and the only differing thing between them is that someone's designed a different wallpaper. I think with BSD, with FreeBSD based uh, OSs, they have to have a reason. And I don't know what reason Midnight BSD has got. It, it's not for everyone. I want it to be. And so is the developer, but he's got a lot of work to do on it. And if it was aimed at, say, for instance, um, other developers, or if it was aimed at people who like to roll up sleeves and really make a system from scratch, then I think it would be okay. But it's not uh, for everyone. And I know it's a fork rather than a derive. There is a difference. And to me, I don't understand why we do that. I mean, Dragon BSD did that many, many moons ago, and they were very successful. Um, I don't understand why you would fork and then try and reinvent the wheel. Uh, to a certain extent, that's what he's doing. Um, he's doing it, but it's very slow. I mean, it is an improvement over the last version 1.1, which I liked, looked at a couple of years back. Now we're at version 2.03, and there are some of the same bugs there. I don't want to besmirch anyone's work. I know a lot of time and effort goes into it. It's like, you know, I mean, it's not nice when you work hard on something and then somebody um, criticizes it for no reason. But I just want to show that everything from the initial install not working, Firefox crashing because it didn't have the right uh, packages installed with it, to not having LibreOffice, to not having uh, really any other desktops that mainstream it's just you know it's too much it's too much hard work and i know that sounds daft because you have to put a little bit of hard work into freebsd if you want to build up your own system but you know that with freebsd and when you do build up your own system it works it's uh, very much a build it yourself or build your own or make it your own with midnight bsd i don't think that applies i think you would uh, you'd expect it to work out the box it doesn't then you perhaps you expect to uh, make it your own, but you can't. Anyway, this was my second uh, try at Midnight BSD. I don't suppose that I'm on the developer's Christmas card list anymore. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.